Hi, exciting times. It's that time of year again where I am doing an annual QCS exam marking here for Queensland and therefore it means it's time for the 2017 exam marker video diary. I love putting these video diaries together because it's a chance for me to spill everything that has come up during the day, all those little gold nuggets of information and tips and little things that I see happening in students' papers and tweaks and criteria that I see coming up on mark schemes. I get to share it with you while it's fresh in my head and hot off the press. <laughs> so without further ado, um, let's go with day number one. So today has been the first day of marking, which essentially means it's the first day of training. Now I get lots of questions <laughs> from students and everyone's always super curious to actually know what really goes on behind the curtain, behind the scenes of exam marking. So I'll start off today by telling you a little bit about how the process works, what really happens to your paper once it gets scooped off your desk and um, give you a bit of an insight. So first day, two days we have of marker training and that includes some practice marking of real exam papers as well. What I want to do really is share with you the level of detail <laughs> that is gone into in terms of crafting mark schemes and how we interpret them and the practice we have with them so that you know that your papers are being marked really accurately and for parents you know that your son or daughter's papers are having a lot of care taken over them in terms of how they're marked. So. What I thought I'd do is just show you, first of all, okay, this is the mark scheme. I'll bring that up a little bit closer. I don't expect you to be able to actually read this. This is the mark scheme for just one item or one question on the paper, okay? So you see how much detail there is. There's all the grade descriptors, there's the model response, and there's the notes. What is even more interesting is this is what it looks like after a day of training. So this is what my actual marking guide now looks like. We've got highlights, we've got notes, we've got annotations. That's for a three star item. That would be, um, they're graded here, so it goes from A to D. Um, that would probably be for around a four or, four, four or five mark question if it was in marks in terms of the standard and the amount or the quantity of the response or the size of the response. This is a five star item. So you can see still just as detailed, larger model response and it goes down to grade D, uh, sorry, grade E. Here's my version after just one day of training. I wanted to share those with you because you see just how much detail and how many criteria there are just for one question. So I'm only marking two questions out of the whole paper. And what this is also known as, and a lot of schools do this with their larger assessment pieces or formal exams, it's called corporate marking. So what it means is there's some consistency through every student's papers. So us as a group of markers, we're subdivided into units. And so my unit, unit three, has two questions to mark. That means that we look at the same two questions, two questions, two questions over every paper, which is brilliant because we get really good and really accurate at marking those particular questions. And it's great from my perspective as a coach, as a tutor, um, as a program writer and a trainer for students because I get to see thousands, literally thousands of papers. So that gives me a huge and a deep insight into what students are doing, what's getting the marks, where they're losing marks as well. So what this consists of is we have about three, three and a half hours training in the morning. That means we have leaders that go through the marking guide, break it all down. We look at um, sample scripts and I'll tell you about that in a moment and we do some practice scripts. All right, and script is the posh technical word we just use for completed students' papers, okay? So the second point I wanted to make is 
the process that we go through and it's interesting because it's the same process that we would use as teachers to teach students or at least it's a really good format or a really good structure for teaching students and what that is is therefore they teach us the concepts i.e what each of the criteria are and what's in each of the criteria or what's in each what criteria in each of the grades <laughs> and the standards that we're applying and then they go through and will show us a response at each of those grades. And that's fantastic because we get to see it in action. So first of all, we learn the concepts, then we see it applied to an example and have that broken down and done for us and explained for us. And then we have to have a go at seeing a response and deciding which grade it fits into or what marks it would be allocated and what criteria it has or hasn't met. So do you see how that structure builds? And that's the perfect, well not the only perfect, but one of the perfect ways to learn new content. So just coming like a step back from exams for a moment and just thinking more about how to learn and how to learn effectively, that's a really good three-step system. And they apply it for us and it's tough, but it works. <laughs> so let me tell you, it has been a tough day. <laughs> there are definitely times where, again, this is like being in the student's um, shoes <laughs> and we see a, a response and they break it down and they say, so what do you think? And I'll say either out loud or in my head or on my piece of paper. Okay, that gets a grade B. And then they'll come out and say, okay, this is an A grade piece, or oh, this is a D1 piece, because actually there's slightly different categories within some of the grades as to where it can fall. So for example, there's a couple of ways you could get a C or a couple of different ways students could get the criteria for a D. And then you go, oh man, I, I clearly am no good at this. So we have those same responses that students have when they are learning or when they're in the classroom or when they're trying to pick up new information, new knowledge, new understandings. <laughs> And new skills. So there have definitely been times where I have sat and gone, oh clearly I, I don't understand or clearly I've missed something but here's the key, the more you practice it the better it gets. The more responses we read the more all of those criteria start to slot in and you start to see patterns and you start to create this sort of subconscious system in your mind of going, oh yeah, okay, I know if it hasn't got this, it has to go down here. And I know if it hasn't got this, it has to go down there. And I know if I see this, it's showing me this, which means it's more up here. And that's what started to happen this afternoon. So what happens is after we've had some training, some practice, some more training, and some more practice, we then go down to the marking hall and we begin marking some practice scripts. And when I say practice, that's, that's not right. They're not practice scripts, they're real scripts, but they are very closely monitored because they know that we're just starting. So don't worry if you feel like, what if my baby's in that first batch? <laughs> they are very closely monitored and checked, triple checked, double checked, and I'll get onto the checking in a second. So once you start working through lots and lots and lots and get into a rhythm and start to see the different things that are coming up, it does start to slot into place. So there's practice and perseverance and being willing to look for things and a brilliant tip they gave us today. I've never heard someone say it like this and I wish I'd thought of saying it like this before. Rather than looking for ways why it doesn't fit the criteria when they've already determined this is the grade it's got, look for the reasons why it does. So rather than working against a system and trying to argue against it, Look for ways that you can make it work so that it builds your understanding rather than you trying to <laughs> deconstruct it and go against and essentially put blocks on your understanding. So that was a really good tip that, was, that really resonated for me and I wanted to pass on for you. So the last thing I wanted to say is the number of times that scripts are marked because often students worry and go, but what if the marker marks mine wrong? In the QCS, and I don't know how this works across every state or every country, but I can tell you that I've seen this happen um, in a couple of different exam boards now. What happens is obviously all the papers are anonymous. It's just a student number. We have no idea what schools it's from, what part of the, the state or the country or wherever it's from. I have no idea. It's completely anonymous. And 
every script gets marked at least twice. So what happens is it kind of finds its way around the system. I'll show you a sneaky photo <laughs> of what the exam hall looks like. Um, and you'll get that on Facebook soon. So you'll probably see that before this goes out. And if you're watching this video um, a few days later, go back, check out Facebook, Rock Solid Study. I'll put on a sneaky photo. I'm allowed, it's okay. And um, where was I? The photos of all the papers go round. Every script, so that student's completed paper, gets marked twice. And what happens then, it goes through the computer system, and if the computer sees that two different results have been given for the same question, for the same, pa uh, for the same script, it will go around a third time. So everybody's papers are marked twice, and if they get the same result or grade to give them to them for that question, that's it, they get that grade or that mark. And if there's some discrepancy, it will be marked a third time, and often by one of the lead or the chief examiners or what we call the immersers. So they're people that have absolutely been doing this <laughs> since day one. <laughs> and they will often be given the task of doing it for the third time. So, um, that's it for me for today. I know this video is a little bit longer than normal, but that's what happens in my video diaries because I've got a lot I want to share with you just from each day. Um, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead because I'm going to be putting these out one each week for the blog. And I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.